Hi everybody, this is Carmelo with the Aero Experience. Today we're flying with Josh Kelly with Piston Aviation. Awesome, thank you very much, uh, Josh and Piston, for having us up today. Of course, it's our pleasure. Beautiful, right in the middle. Now something cool about our oil system in this aircraft is it utilizes wet sump lubrication and has a dry sump tank and pump. So again, it's not something you see very often and it allows it to be just a little bit more maneuverable. While I'm down here, I'm gonna take a look at our brake pad. Okay, so it's looking good and we still have visible pad on there. Walking around our leading edge here, making sure there's no dents, dings, or damage to it. Do the whole walk around here. Check our aileron, make sure we have movement. And the securing point bolts down here are nice and tight for us, not gonna lose an aileron in flight. And one thing to add to this aircraft is it does have the aileron trim, which you don't see a lot in GA, um, but it is a very useful tool and it makes it so much more stable in flight. So we have the option in flight um, through our joystick to be able to change that trim and it just makes it so much more um, controllable for us as the pilot. We're all good to go there and we'll give our little tail wheel strike wheel a good spin for good luck. And of course we do have our elevator tram tab. It does take up a good chunk of the control surface so it's very effective in flight. In our aircraft's POH, we have to measure the fuel before every flight. So we just have this one handy dandy little stick here, and you do what you did with your chocolate milk as a kid. You put it in, put your finger at the top, it creates that suction point, and we pull it back out and we can look at the number. So you can kind of see it's at six and a half there. So I'll reference our chart from our POH, and we know that six and a half is about 15 and a half gallons in this tank. And we'll do the same thing on the other way. about six. Just under 15 and a half gallons in our right tank. So we're sitting just better for full fuel. Canopy is secure, and we'll go through a run-up checklist. So we're faced into the wind here. We made sure our canopy is secure, our parking brake is set, and we'll make sure our flight controls are free and correct. Do the Maverick here. All right, nice and simple for us. All we have to do is tap on the G3X Touch to get it up. All right, and we will go ahead and give ourselves throttle up to 4,000 RPM. And we'll do our magneto test. So we'll come to the left here. Good drop. That's a start. Over to the right. Good drop, good split. And back to start. And do a carpet test. So pull our carpet all the way out. Okay, good drop. And push it back in. All right, and we'll go power to idle. All right, four takeoff checklist. Our transponder is set, we're squawking VFR, our radios are tuned up to creep core. Go over a quick takeoff briefing with you. So we're gonna depart off a of runway three, four today. If we have any engine complications, emergencies on our takeoff roll, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go power to idle, we'll hop on the brakes, then we'll taxi off on the nearest taxiway. Any engine complications, emergencies after rotation. If we have any usable runway remaining, we will put the aircraft back down, hop on the brakes, and taxi off on the nearest taxiway. 
If we rotate and there is no more usable runway, we'll look 30 degrees off either side of the nose and we'll put the aircraft down in a field. And if we have a thousand feet of altitude, we'll circle back and land on the runway. Do you have any questions? Nope, no sir. Good deal. All right, that's taken care of. Verify that our altimeter is the correct. We'll turn it down a little bit, it's a little bit high for us. So three, zero, zero, two. Altimeter is set. I have my seatbelt on. Do you have your seatbelt on? Yes, sir. Good deal. Seatbelts are secured. Autopilot, verify that it's off on our scoreboard here. It is. All right. Lights is required. We have our strobe on. I'll go ahead and flip our landing light on now. Okay. Fuel selectors on our fullest tank. Fuel pump comes on. Engine instruments are also looking good in the green. Canopy is secured. We have our flaps down too. All right, we are good to go. You ready to go? Let's go. All right, finals clear. Base clear. Creek 4. Creek 4 traffic for stall November 445, Lima Mike, departing runway 34. We're going to be on Northwest Departure, Creep Core. All right, one thing that's kind of cool about this plane is we treat every takeoff like a soft field takeoff. So we get to do a fun little wheelie down the runway. All right, we'll hold ground effect until we get to 75. And we'll climb out at 75. And you are climb out at our VY speed of 75. Three four traffic for stall number four four five. Lima Mike is making a left crosswind, and we'll depart off the crosswind to the northwest. Three four. Hi everybody, this is Carmelo with the Aero Experience. Today we're flying with Josh Kelly with Piston Aviation. Awesome, thank you very much, uh, Josh and Piston, for having us up today. Of course, it's our pleasure. We very much appreciate it. Today we're flying in the Bristol 912. Uh, this is one of the fleet training aircraft for Piston Aviation. It's also representing uh, Bristol Midwest. So Josh, what got you into uh, aviation uh, in the first place? Got you on, clear. Okay. So my story really begins with my grandpa. He was an army pilot uh, back in Vietnam. So talking to him and kind of hearing a little bit about his stories is what sparked my interest. I've always wanted to be a pilot since I was about 11 years old. Um, I took my first flight lesson at the age of 12 and really just hit the ground from there. Um, been taking flight lessons on and off since then and when I turned 20, went through an accelerated program and got all of my certificates. So now what are your uh, what are your ratings now? Um, we got so you loud clear. I'm a CFI, CFII, and a MEI. Awesome. So you've been with Piston Aviation for a while? Short time now? Yeah, so I started here in July. How do you like Midwest uh, Midwest flying, CFI work? So I absolutely love it. Um, it's been a little bit different to navigate than the East Coast. Uh, we definitely get a lot more rain out in the East, but all in all, I've enjoyed my experience out here in the Midwest. And I can't get over the views out of this canopy. Sometimes I just have to stop and look out, really just take everything in. It really is impressive, and like I said, we're not just saying that. I mean, take a look around. Oh, no, you almost uh, have 360 degrees of view. It is pretty amazing. So do you fly the, uh, the Bristels more of uh, the fleet? Because you do also have uh, Piper aircraft as well. 
in your fleet, uh, but the two Bristels seem to stand out quite a bit. As far as my time, I, I prefer the Bristels over the Pipers. Um, there's definitely a lot more options in the Bristel, and with the, the screens that we have in here, it just makes teaching so much more simplistic. And the Bristel just offers so many more options for us. It is amazing that this, uh, this is a very high-end light sport aircraft, and it has a lot of options on it, and you can teach pretty well the full gamut of uh, your flight training on these aircraft, is that correct? So yeah, we do offer every type of training out there in this aircraft. So we do have private, instrument, commercial, we have CFI, CFII, um, yeah, really anything that you want to learn, you can get taught it in this aircraft. Yeah, all my students have absolutely loved the Bristol. They call it the little Lamborghini sports car. Um, there, there's no greater feeling than getting in an airplane that, you know, looks as well as it performs. We do have our aileron trim, um, which is a really neat feature in flight. So I'm able to actually use my little cone here on the stick and trim out my ailerons to hold the aircraft exactly how I want it. So I can actually fly this completely hands off just using my trim. It does have very large, uh, or looks visually large control surfaces for the size of the aircraft. Yeah, so if we look out on our wings, our ailerons take up a good, I'd probably say quarter of our wings. So they are very sensitive to the stick's movement. Um, so I really don't have to put much control input to get it to bank whatever direction I want it to. Just very tiny corrections and the aircraft is very responsive. It'll go right to wherever I tell it to go to. So the guys that I have that are coming from six packs that see this, um, it, it's like a kid in a candy store type of look. Um, they're going from looking at old steam gauges and having to whip out their paper sectional and you know take that 10 minutes to unfold it to, oh my goodness, it's right there. So it, it actually makes it that correlation level of knowledge so much easier to obtain because we'll sit down, we'll have a ground lesson based on charts and cross-country flight planning and then we come out to the aircraft and be able to see your aircraft moving along your flight plan on that chart supplement. It helps the, that click in the student's brain that much more and solidify that correlation level of knowledge which is what we're all going after as instructors. All right, the runway's about 45 degrees off my left shoulder. Go ahead and make that base turn. 3-4 traffic, and up to 4-4-5 left base, 3-4-3-4. Three, four, three, four. Three, four. Okay, on base, we'll get that second notch flaps in. Starting to slow down to our final speed here, which is 70 to 65 knots. Final's clear. All right, let's start turning. Three four traffic, and up to four four five. Give a mic. Final three four three four. On final, we'll get our last notch flaps in here. Got a little bit of a crosswind, so we'll throw a little bit of left aileron, or right aileron, sorry, left rudder. Final three, four. Three, four, well, I hope you had fun. You know, safety is always my top priority, but fun is a close second. Absolutely, we had a blast. All right, we're on our after landing checklist. Car heats in, flaps come up. Looks like everyone's getting back right now. Alpha, final three, four, three, four traffic. 